Instead of breaking down a paper this week, I'm going to kick off a new series which I hope will be a regular feature on this channel. I call it Stats and Methods Shorts. In this first one, we're going to talk about an important issue to me, statistical significance versus effect size. Statistical significance is, in essence, the likelihood that what you see in your data is due to chance. In any given study, the sample we take can be quite representative or quite not representative of the general population. So in terms of statistical significance, it may actually be that the difference observed between group A and group B is simply due to the people you happen to recruit, otherwise known as sampling error. To then measure statistical significance, we do a bunch of fancy calculations to get what we call a p-value. p is the probability that our finding is due to sampling error. As a general rule, we consider finding statistically significant if p is less than 0.05. In other words, we want to be at least 95% sure that our finding is not simply due to chance. However, statistical significance isn't the end of the story. We also want to know how big our effect actually is, and for that, we have effect size. Effect size is exactly what it sounds like. It's a measure of how big our effect is, or in layman's terms, how much we should care. There are many different ways we can measure effect size, but I'm just going to run through the four most common in psychology. First, we have Pearson's R. R is a correlation coefficient that can range from negative 1 to positive 1 and simply states how related our variables of interest are. The further away from 0 R is, the stronger the association. However, Pearson's R doesn't really tell us directly how much variability our correlation exactly explains. For that, we have R squared. For a simple correlation, we just square Pearson's R to get R squared, but for more complex models, we have to calculate it in a different way. However we compute it, R squared signifies what percent of our total variance the model in question explains. So if we get an R squared of 0.3, our model explains 30% of the total variance in our outcome of interest. When comparing two groups, we often use Cohen's D to measure effect size. Cohen's D signifies the mean difference between our two groups as a proportion of their pooled variance. For example, a Cohen's D of 0.5 means that our two group means are half a standard deviation apart. However, when we are comparing more than two groups, we tend to use eta squared and partial eta squared. For the purposes of this video, I'm not going to go into the difference between the two. Both eta squared and partial eta squared signify the proportion of total variance in our outcome of interest that is actually explained by the difference between our various groups. So if we get a partial eta squared of 0.2, then the differences between our groups explain 20% of the total variance in our outcome of interest. Now, I did somewhat jokingly call effect size a measure of how much we should care, but small effect sizes can still be meaningful. If we're dealing with a really large population, like the 328 million people in the United States, a small effect size will still translate to a whole lot of people. To continue our US example, if we develop a new treatment that only helps 3% of people, but it's really cheap and easy to give to everyone in the country, it can still help millions of folks. That's all for now. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you've got a stats and methods topic you'd like me to break down, or more thoughts on this one, let me know in the comments.